Hello sixth grade boys and girls. In this video we're going to be going over your chapter 2 my independent study guide booklet problems. Chapter 2 lesson 1. Express 0 0.4 as a fraction in simplest form. 0 0.4 the four is in the tenths place, so this would be four tenths. Our question asks us to write this in simplest form. I can do this by dividing by two, dividing by two, and you get eight, sorry, you get two fifths. B is your correct answer. Question number two. Express 0 0.6 as a fraction in simplest form. 0 0.6. There's no number in the ones place. There is a 6 in the tenths place. That would be 6 tenths. The question asks us to put the fraction in simplest form. I can do that by dividing by 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3, 10 divided by 2 is 5, C is your answer, 3 fifths. Question number 3, express 9 twentieths as a decimal. 9 over 20. This fraction can be read 9 out of 20, 9 twentieths or nine divided by 20. Nine divided by 20, or nine divided by 20. 20 cannot go into nine, so I put a zero there. Add a decimal point and a zero. 20 can go into 90 four times, which is 80. I subtract and I get 10. Add a zero, bring it down. 20 goes into 100 five times, which is 100. I subtract and I get zero. 9 twentieths equals 45 hundredths, and that is answer D. Problem number four, express four fifths as a decimal. Four fifths can be read 4 over 5, 4 fifths, or 4 divided by 5. 4 divided by 5, or 4 divided by 5. 5 cannot go into 4. I'm going to add a decimal point and a 0. I'm going to bring my decimal point up. 5 goes into 40 8 times, which is 40 with nothing left over. Four fifths as a decimal is eight tenths. Answer A. Question number five, write 0 0.75 as a fraction in simplest form. When we read this number, the seven is in the tenths place, the five is in the hundredths place, so this reads 75 hundredths. We can write that as 75 hundredths. To simplify this fraction, you can divide the numerator and de denominator by 25, and that would equal 3 fourths. If you did not know that you could divide by 25, you could divide by 75 over 100, divided by 5, 5 goes into 75 15 times, 5 goes into 100 20 times, then you would divide by 5 again, 15 divided by 5 is 3, 20 divided by 5 is 4. So both answers would equal 3 fourths, and that is option D. Now we are working on chapter 2, lesson 2 questions. Question number one, 
express 9% as a fraction in simplest form. 9% is 9% per 100. That's option B. Question number two, express 40% as a fraction in simplest form. 40% is 40 per 100. They want us to write it in simplest form. I can divide by 10 on the top, 10 on the bottom, and get 4 tenths. I then can divide by 2 on the top and 2 on the bottom and get 2 fifths. Additionally, we could have divided by 20 on the top and the bottom and that would have given us 2 fifths in one step. The answer is D. Question number three, express seven tenths as a percent. Seven tenths. We wanna change this to a percent, which is per 100. We're going to create an equivalent fraction. 10 times 10 is 100. Seven times 10 is 70. 70 over 100, or 70 per 100, is 70%. The option is B, 70%. Question number four, express 11 fiftieths as a percent. 11 fiftieths can be read 11 per 50. For a percent, you want it to be per 100. 50 times 2 is 100. 11 times 2 is 22. 22 over 100, or 22 per 100, is 22%. Answer is A. Question number 5. Express 95% as a fraction. 95% is 95 per 100. We want to reduce this fraction. We can do that by dividing the top number by five and the bottom number by five. The numerator is 95 divided by five and the denominator 100 divided by five. 100 divided by five is 20. 95 divided by five. Five is able to divide nine one time with one left over, or sorry, four left over. Bring down the five. Five goes into 45 nine times with none left over. So your answer is 19 twentieths. The following questions are for chapter two, lesson three. Question one. Express 5% as a decimal. 5% is 5 per 100. This says 5 hundredths. So we're going to write 5 hundredths. This is the ones place, the tenths place, the hundredths place. So this number is 0 0.05 or 5 hundredths. B. Question two, express 8 hundredths as a percent. 0 0.08 is 8 hundredths. This is the ones place, the tenths place, the hundredths place. I can make that into a fraction by doing eight hundredths, which equals eight percent. You can also, 
Another option would be to move the decimal point over twice. When you convert from a decimal to a percent, you move the decimal over to the right two times. One, two. And then add a percent symbol. Either method will give you 8%, which is answer C. Express 56% as a decimal. 56% is 56 per 100. We can write that as 0 0.56 because this says 56 hundredths. The 5 is in the tenths place, the 6 is in the hundredths place. Another way you could do it would be you have 56 percent. If this is a whole number, so the decimal point would be behind the 6. And if you want to change it to a decimal, you move the decimal two places to the left. So your answer would be 0 0.56. Both methods give you answer D. Express 83% as a decimal. 83% is 83 per 100. This reads 83 hundredths. I can write 0 0.83 because that's hundredths. The 8 is in the tens place. The 3 is in the hundredths place. Another method would be I have 80 three percent. This is a whole number, so the decimal point would be behind the three. To change it to a decimal, you move the decimal to the left two times. One, two. And your answer would be 0 0.83. And that is option B. Question number five, express 48 percent as a decimal. 48 percent is 48 per hundred. This reads 48 hundredths. I can write that as 0 0.48. The four is in the tenths place. The eight is in the hundredths place. Another method would be 48 percent. This is a whole number. The decimal follows the eight. To change a percent into a decimal, you want to move the decimal to the left twice. One, two. So 0 0.48. Again, either method will give you the same answer, and that is answer A. The following questions go along with chapter two, lesson four. What is 125% expressed as a mixed number in simplest form? 125% is 125% 125 is per 100. 100 is able to divide 125 one whole time with 25 left over. This is an improper fraction because the numerator is larger than the denominator. Now, we can reduce this fraction by dividing by 25 on the top and 25 on the bottom. Now, the one stays the same. 25 divided by 25 is one. 100 divided by 25 is 4. So our answer is 1 and 1 fourth B. Express 236 as a mixed number in simplest form. 236% is 236% per 100. This is an improper fraction because the numerator is larger than the denominator. 100 is able to divide 236 two whole times with 36 over 100 left over. We can reduce this fraction 
by dividing by four on the top and four on the bottom. The two stays the same. 36 divided by four is nine. 100 divided by four is 25. So your final answer is two and nine twenty-fifths, which is answer C. Express 0 0.49 percent or 49 hundredths of a percent as a decimal. Now, this would be 49 hundredths of a percent. So it would be 0 0.49 per 100. We don't like to mix fractions and decimals together, so we're going to do another option. 0 0.49 percent. If I want to go from a percent to a decimal, I need to move the decimal to the left two times. That would be one, two. This gives me a space here, and I need to have a zero as a space holder. So this would equal 49 tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths. So this would be 49 ten thousandths, and that is option D. Now to check your work, if I went the other way, by mistake, 0.49%. If I went the other way by mistake, one, two, that would give me 49. That's a whole number. And this is less than 1%, so that answer would not be reasonable. So always check your work. Question number four, express 7 hundredths percent as a decimal. 0.07%. To change a percent to a decimal, you need to move the decimal over to the left two times. One, two. Add a zero to hold the place, and your answer would be 0 .0007. This is tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, so that would be seven ten thousandths. And that is answer B. Now, again, if you were to make a mistake and go to the right two spaces instead, you would have a number that would not be reasonable. One, two, okay? That would give me a, a whole number of seven. Seven would equal actually 700%, just as one equals 100%. So this would not be a reasonable answer. Question number five, express 830% as a decimal. 830% is 830 over 100. This is an improper fraction because the numerator is larger than the denominator. 100 can go into 830 eight times with 30 left over. We can reduce this fraction, or actually we don't want to reduce it because we want to change it to a decimal. This would be eight and 30 hundredths. Okay, and you can actually simplify that again to 8.3. Now, another method would be to do 830 percent, this is a whole number, so the decimal would be here in the percent, then move it, move the decimal to the left twice, one, two, and that would give me 8.30 or 8.3. And that is answer D. The following questions go along with chapter two, lesson five. Question one, which symbol makes the sentence true? Is two and three eighths equal to, less than, greater than, or none of these when compared to two and six sixteenths? Now, the method that we're going to use is common denominators for this one because eight and 16 can have a common denominator of 16. So, 
I'm going to rewrite the problem again a little bit larger. I'm going to fill that in. I notice that 8 can easily convert to 16 by multiplying by 2. So I'm going to have 2's there. I'm going to multiply by 2, multiply by 2. 8 times 2 is 16, and 3 times 2 is 6. And then over here, this, this fraction will stay the same. And as you can see, they're the same number. So they are equal, which is answer A. Question number two says to write four and two thirds, four and two thirds, four and five sixths, four and five sixths, five and one fourth, five and one fourth, and four and three eighths, four and three eighths, in order from least to greatest. When I look at my numbers, I notice that three of them have a four as their whole number. Four, four, four. My last one here has five and one fourth. This number is greater than all of the rest, and because my problem is asking me to write them from least to greatest, I'm going to write five and one fourth over here on the right because that is going to be our greatest value. Now when you use a number line to help you order fractions, we know we're going from basically 5, I could put a little 5 here, okay, and my the least would be 4, and then there's going to be 4 and 1 half in the middle, okay. So I'm going to place these last remaining three fractions either to the left of one half or to the right of one half because it will be either less than a half or greater than a half. So in this fraction, I have a denominator of three. Four halves in this case would be four and half of three is 1.5 over two, three. Now two is greater than one and a half. So this problem is actually greater than a half. So I'm not sure where on this line, but I know it's gonna be on the right. So we're gonna put four and two thirds over here. We're gonna save that for now. Now, when I compare four and five sixths to four and a half, a half would be four and three sixths because half of six is three. Now, in this situation, 5 is greater than 3, so 5 6 is greater than 3 6, which means it's greater than 4 and 1 half. So this number is also going to go over here. All right, now we have 4 and 3 eighths. Half would be 4 and 4 eighths, because half of 8 is 4. 3 is less than 4, so that means 3 eighths is less than 1 half. So I can confidently put 4 and 3 eighths on this side. So I have 5 and 1 fourth here, 4 and 3 eighths here. Now I just have to compare these two fractions. Now the way I'm going to do it is with common denominators because I can easily change a 3 to a 6. They both will have the four. Five, six stays the same. I multiply the numerator by two and the denominator by two and I get four, six. Now, four, six is less than five, six. So that means that four and two thirds is less than five and, sorry, four and five, six. So we're gonna have four and two thirds and four and five sixths. Okay, so our answer is four and three eighths followed by four and two thirds followed by four and five sixths followed by five and one fourth. Okay, 
And looking at our answers, it appears that B is the correct answer. Question number three, which symbol makes the sentence true? Here we have four ninths and we're gonna compare it to seven fifteenths. Now, while these are both divisible by three, my numerators are not divisible by three. So the method that I'm going to use is our cross multiplication, all right? So we're going to multiply 15 times four which is 60, and nine times seven, which is 63. 63 is larger than 60, so that means 7 fifteenths is larger than 4 ninths. 4 ninths is less than 7 fifteenths. The answer is C. Which symbol makes this sentence true? 3 eighths is less than or greater than or equal to 5 fourteenths. Now they do give you a D answer. This symbol here is, it's light gray. I'm not sure why they have that here, but that's less than or equal to, okay? Um, now, as I look at my fractions, I'm not seeing an easy common denominator here, so I'm going to use cross multiplication again. Eight times five is 40. Uh, 14 times three, four times three is 12, carry the one. Three times one is three, plus one is four, 42. 42 is bigger than 40, so 3 eighths is greater than 5 fourteenths. And that is answer. Question number five, choose the fraction that is greater than 9 sixteenths. So here we have 9 sixteenths. 9 sixteenths is greater than 1 half because 1 half would actually equal 8 sixteenths, okay? Now, let's look at our, our choices here. A is 8 fifteenths. Half would be 7.5 fifteenths. So eight is greater than one half, okay? So we're gonna have a little chart here, and this is equal to one half. All right, so everything on the right column here is equal to a half. B, we have 6 fourteenths. 7 fourteenths would equal half. So this is actually less than a half. C is 6 elevenths. 5.5 over 11 would equal half. So 6 elevenths is greater than half. And then D, we have 7 twelfths. And 6 twelfths would be half. So this is greater than a half. Now here it says to choose the fraction that is greater than 9 sixteenths. Well, considering the fact that 9 sixteenths is greater than a half, and answer B is less than a half, we know that it cannot be answer B. Now, there's many different ways to solve this problem. I'm gonna be honest with you, I probably would use a calculator for this because as I look here, 16, 15, 11, 12, we're not really talking about compatible numbers here. Now, um, we're going to change 9 sixteenths into a decimal, 8 fifteenths into a decimal, and 6 elevenths into a decimal, 
and 7 twelfths into a decimal. Okay, so I have my calculator here. And again, this is 9 divided by 16. So I'm going to put in my calculator 9 divided by 16 equals. And I get 0 0.5625. Um, next, I'm going to do 8 divided by 15. And I'm going to get 0 0.53 repeating. 6 divided by 11 equals 0 0.54, 54, 54, 54, so that's repeating. And then 7 divided by 12 equals 0 0.583 repeating. Okay, now, let's see if I have that up here, sorry. Oh, this totally sinks, never mind, oh God. Question number five, choose the fraction that is greater than nine sixteenths. Okay, so we have a whole bunch here, a whole bunch of numbers. Now, um, I'm gonna look at nine sixteenths first. And nine sixteenths is greater than one half because one half would actually equal eight sixteenths. So take a minute to look at that. I know that 9 sixteenths is greater than a half, all right? Now, if I can eliminate all the fractions here that are less than a half, that's gonna be helpful to me. So for A, we have 8 fifteenths. Well, half, we're gonna make a little chart here, half of 15 is 7.5 fifteenths. So eight is actually greater than a half. All right, B, I have six fourteenths. Seven fourteenths is half. So six fourteenths is less than half. C, six elevenths, five point five over 11 is half. So 6 elevenths is greater than half. D, 7 twelfths. Well, 6 twelfths is half. So 7 twelfths is greater than half. All right. Now we're looking for a fraction that is greater than 9 sixteenths. Well, B can't be greater than 9 sixteenths because 9 sixteenths is greater than a half and 6 fourteenths is less than a half. So answer B is not gonna work. This means that we have to compare 9 sixteenths, 8 fifteenths. We have to compare 9 sixteenths to 6 elevenths and 9 sixteenths to 7 twelfths and see which of these three fractions is larger than 9 sixteenths. Honestly, I would use um, a calculator to change these into decimals because 16, 15, 11, and 12, they're not very friendly numbers. They're not compatible that much. So we're going to change these into decimals. You do that by taking your numerator and dividing it by your denominator. 9 divided by 16 equals 0 0.5625. 8 fifteenths, 8 divided by 15 equals, oops, 8 divided by 15 equals 0 0.53 repeating. 6 divided by 11 equals 0 0.54, and the 54 is repeating 54, 54, 54, 54, and so on. <clears throat> 7 divided by 12 equals 0 0.583 repeating. Now, we want to know which of these numbers is greater than 5,625 ten thousandths. Okay, so. 0 0.53 is not greater. 0 
is not greater. 0 0.583 is greater. So 7 twelfths is greater than 9 sixteenths, and that is answer D. The following questions are for Chapter 2, Lesson 6. Estimate 67% of 28. We're going to change 67% to 70%. We're going to round 28 to 30. So our question is, what is 70% of 30? We're going to change 70% to a decimal, of to multiplication, and we're going to keep 30. So we're going to do 30 times 0.70. There are two decimals in my multiplication problem, so there are two decimal points in my answer, so the approximate answer is 21. Now, if I look over here, the closest answer to that would be 20. Now, I know it's not 25 because here I rounded up, and here I rounded up. So I rounded 67 up to 70 and 28 up to 30. So that means that my estimate is actually larger than my actual answer. So you wouldn't want to mark 25 because that would be even further away. Question two, estimate 5% of 59. So 5% we can leave. 5% of, I might round 59 to 60. So I'm going to change 5% to a decimal, which is 0 0.05. I'm going to change of to multiplication, and I'm going to keep 60. So 60 times 0 0.05. 5 times 0 is 0. 5 times 6 is 30. Okay, I don't have to keep multiplying. I have two decimals in my multiplication problem, two decimal places, so I'm going to have two in my answer. So three is my estimation for this problem. Question number three, estimate 48% of 52. 48% is close to 50% of and 52 is close to 50. Now, you could multiply this out by changing this to 0 0.50 times 50, but we know that 50% is actually half of 50. And you can do this mentally. Half of 50 is 25. So I don't actually have to go to do the math. If you wanted to do it to prove yourself correct, you could, but half of 50 is 25. This is a mental math problem, a problem you can do in your head. Question number four, estimate 33% of 119. We're gonna solve this two different ways. Now, the first way is similar to the one, way we've been solving it. We're gonna round 30 3% to 30% of, and I'm going to make this 120. Okay. Now, this change, 30% changes to 0 0.30 times 120. And I do want to say that you don't actually need this zero here because 3 tenths and 3 30 hundredths are the same thing. So you could reduce this to just 0.3 times 120. This will help you when you're multiplying because you'll have less zeros to worry about. 3 times 0 is 0, 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 3 is 3. I have one decimal place in my problem so I need to have one in my answer. So this gives me a 36 as my estimate. 
Now, the number closest to 36 is 40, which is A. Now, there is a way that they got 40, and that's a different, a different method um, where they got exactly 40. 33% is actually equal to one third. When you do 33% on a calculator, um, so if I do 33%, okay, um, that actually equals 0 0.3, but really what it is is one divided by, sorry, go back here, one divided by three equals, you can see how I have a repeating decimal here, okay? So 33%, I mean, in theory, you would have 33.3%, okay, which is one third. So this is kind of your estimate. Now, we still are gonna change 119 to 120. So we have to say, what's one third of 120? And that's 40, okay? So if you were to basically divide 120, divide 120 divided by three, you would get 40. And that's where they got their answer of um, A, 40. Question number five. Estimate 24% of 298, okay? 24% is about 25% of, means multiply, and 298 would be about 300, okay? So, you could do 0.25 times 300. So 300 times 0.25, 0, 0, 15, 0, 0, 6. Add them together, 0, 0, 5, 7. 2 over, 2 over, 75. Now, another way to look at this problem would be that 25% is a fourth. It's one fourth of 300. So if I did 300 divided by four, okay, I'd get 75. So that's another way to look at it. The following questions go along with chapter two, lesson seven. Question one, find 35% of 400. 35% of 400. We change 35% to a decimal point of to multiplication and 400 stays the same. So 400 times 35 hundredths. Five times zero is zero. Five times zero is zero. Five times four is 20. I'm done with the five. I add a zero as a placeholder. Three times zero is zero. Three times zero is zero. Three times four is 12. Add zero, 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 four, one. There are two decimal places in my problem, so in my answer I also need two. And the correct answer is B, 140. Find 45% of 360. 45% of 360. We change percent to a decimal by moving the decimal over twice of to multiplication and 360 stays the same. So 360 times 45 hundredths. Five times zero is zero. Five times six is 30, carry the three. Five times three is 15, 16, 17, 18. I'm done with a five, I add a zero as a placeholder. Four times zero is zero. Four times six is 24, carry the two. 
4 times 3 is 12, plus 2 is 14. Add them together, 0, 0, 12, 6, and 1. There are two decimal places in my problem. There are two in my answer. So my answer is 162, which is C. Problem number three, find 72% of 850. 72% of 850. We're going to change 72% to a decimal by moving the decimal point over twice. So I have 0.72 times 850. 850 times 72 hundredths. 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times 5 is 10. Carry the 1. 2 times 8 is 16, 17. I'm done with the 2. I add a 0 as a placeholder. 7 times 0 is 0. 7 times 5 is 35. Carry the 3. 7 times 8 is 56, 57, 58, 59. Add. We have two decimal places in our problem. We need two in our answer, which gives us 612, and that is answer A. Question number four, what number is 60% of 80? 60% of 80. 60 is a whole number, so the decimal follows the zero. We're going to change it into, we're going to change it from a percent to a decimal by moving the decimal point over to the left twice. That gives me 0 0.60 times 80. Now, 60 hundredths and 6 tenths are the same thing. So when I multiply, I can multiply by 6 tenths. It just saves me a step. If you don't feel comfortable, that's okay. You can multiply with the zero, that is fine. Sometimes it's better to be safe. Six times zero is zero. Six times eight is 48. There's one decimal place in my problem, so I need one in my answer. Now, in all the recent problems we've done, there's only been a decimal point in the bottom factor, but just make sure that there isn't one in the top, because if there are in the top and the bottom, you need to include all of them. So this is 48, and that's A. Question number five, what number is 120% of 60? Now right away, I know that my answer is gonna be greater than 60, because 100% of 60 is 60. And then I'm gonna to have to do an additional 20% of 60. And, and so now I know that's gonna be over 60. 120% of 60. Now my decimal point would be here, and if I change from a percent to a decimal, I have to move my decimal to the left twice. So that would give me 1.20 or 1.2 times 60. So uh, 60 times 1.2. 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times 6 is 12. I'm done with a 2. Add a 0 as a placeholder. 1 times 0 is 0. 1 times 6 is 6. Add them together. 7 to 0. But remember, I have one decimal place in my problem, so I need one in my answer. So the answer is 72. The following questions go with chapter two, lesson eight. What number is 65% of 300? So 65% would be 0.65 of is multiply and 300 stays the same. 
So we're going to do 300 times 0 0.65. 5 times 0 is 0, 5 times 0 is 0, 5 times 3 is 15. I'm done with a 5. I add a 0 as a placeholder. 6 times 0 is 0, 6 times 0 is 0, 6 times 3 is 18. Then I'm going to add these together, 0, 0, 5, 9, 1, okay? I have two decimal places in my problem, none up here, 2 is my answer. So 195 is my answer, which is A. Question number two, what number is 21% of 450? So 21% is 0.21 times 450. 450 times 0.21. 450 times one is 450. I had a zero as a placeholder. 2 times 0 is 0, 2 times 5 is 10, carry the 1, 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9. Add them together, 0, 5, 4, 9. I have two decimal places in my problem, I need two in my answer. So that's 90, 94.50, okay? Remember, we don't need ending zeros if there's nothing following it in a decimal, so that could be 94.5. And I know that 5 tenths or 50 hundredths is actually equal to half. So I could also write it as a fraction, which is what they're looking for over here. Uh, that's B. 72 is 48% of what number? Okay, so here we have, we have a little sentence here. 72 is, that means equals, 48%, which is 0 0.48, of what number? N. Now, the way we solve these simple little one-step equations is, since I'm multiplying by 48 hundredths, to cancel that out, I'm going to divide by 48 hundredths and divide by 48 hundredths. So here I have um, 48 hundredths divided by 48 hundredths, and that would equal 1, which basically cancels it out. So now I have n on this side. And then over here, I have 72 divided by 0.48. So I can do that, 72 divided by 0.48. Now we don't like decimals in our divisor, so we move it over as many times as necessary to make it a whole number. And remember, whatever you do on the outside, you need to do on the inside. This is a whole number, so that means I have to move it over twice this way. Okay, and I'm gonna put placeholders, and there's my decimal point, okay. 48 cannot go into 7. It can go into 72 once. 48. I have to borrow here. 6 take away 4 is 2. And bring down the 0. Okay. And I'm going to estimate here um, that. 4 goes into 24 6 times, but that's close to 5. So then we're going to do 5 times, okay, which happens to end up equaling 240 exactly. But don't forget about this other 0. We always forget about this, okay? And this is the important thing. You want to make sure that you have a number above every digit in the dividend. So that's why we put a zero here and you know your answer is going to be correct if above every digit in the dividend you have a digit in the quotient. So our answer is 150 and that is C. Four hundred forty one is sixty three percent of what number? Four hundred forty one is 63% or 63 hundredths 
of what number? We're going to divide by 63 hundredths on both sides. Okay, that cancels each other out, and now I have n equals 441 divided by 63 hundredths. 441 divided by 63 hundredths. 44, sorry, 441 is a whole number. It has a decimal point at the end. We do not like to have decimals in the divisor, so we move it as many times as necessary to make it a whole number. So that would be one, two. And then you do the same thing on the inside, one, two. Add zeros for placeholders. I'm gonna extend my line here. 63 does not go into zero. 63 cannot go into 44. Now, I cover up the one and I cover up the three. Six goes into 44 seven times. It goes into it um, actually, yeah, seven times because that's 42. So I could go over here, 63, I know what it is in my head, but just to prove it, um, that's 21 and 42, 43, 44, 44. Okay, and Robert, we did it. So that's a seven here and that's four, four, one. We subtract and we get a zero. Now it's very important because my number needs to go all the way to here and I have two spots here. So I'm gonna bring down the zero 63 goes into zero, zero times. Bring down the next zero. 63 goes into zero, zero times. Okay, so my answer is 700. Question number five, find 8% 8 of 440. Now, remember, 8% 8 of 440. This is a whole number. The decimal point would be to the right. When you change a decimal to a percent, you have to move the decimal to the left twice. So this is actually 8 hundredths times 440. So 440 times 0.8, or zero, sorry, 0 0.08. Now, because I'm multiplying zero times zero, I mean, you could put zeros here, but it's, it's really not necessary because there's no additional numbers to multiply by. Now, there are two decimal points in your problem or decimal places in your problem. You should have two in your answer. 35 and 20 hundredths, which, as we know, can change into 35.2 which is D.